What's up everyone? What I have in my hand here is an RTX 3000 MXM graphics card. For those who don't know what MXM is, I'll explain in a bit, but this is basically a like, consumer RTX 2060. But you're probably wondering where this is going to go. This is actually going to be installed in my, what is it, 9 year old laptop now? A truly upgradable laptop? You know, I watched a video from Linus from Linus Tech Tips and he reviewed a framework laptop that was considered upgradable. And while I really like the idea, I don't believe they're going to really support it that long. Alienware did the same thing with the Air 51 M R1 where they said that the laptop is upgradable but the 2080 Super that was in the R2 doesn't fit in the R1. So basically it's not really upgradable. MXM on the other hand is a standard that's been out for a very long time. And we're going to go over what exactly MXM is. But wait, that's not all. In this package, I have an MXM to NVMe adapter. So not only are we going to install an RTX 3000 in my laptop, we're going to add an NVMe drive in my 9 laptop that never even had an NVMe slot. So before all that, let's talk about MXM as a whole, shall we? So MXM stands for Mobile PCI Express Graphics Module. All that's turned into MXM. And basically it was created by MXM SIG, which was, I believe, bought out by NVIDIA later on. And they basically released two generations. There was the first generation and the second generation. We're not going to focus on the first generation because it's not really relevant today. But the second generation is still relevant today. You see, these MXM modules came in two sizes. There was Type A and Type B, and really the only difference was the length of the card. The heat sinks were actually completely compatible between them as well. Now, MXM, even though it was controlled by NVIDIA, it didn't just only mean NVIDIA cards. There were also AMD cards that were made in MXM format. So you had both NVIDIA and AMD GPUs in an upgradable format for several years. MXM GPUs even supported SLI and Crossfire using an SLI connector or a Crossfire connector. They were just like desktop GPUs, but in a mobile form factor. The best part about MXM is if I had something like this GTX 580M in my laptop, let's say it came with this, and five years later there was something like a 980M, I can remove this, put the 980M, and I would have a new, more powerful laptop. I would just have to modify the driver file because NVIDIA didn't officially support these decisions. Speaking of MXM or decisions, NVIDIA stopped giving a reference design, or so we were told, after the 900 series. You see, the 200, 400, 5, 6, 7, 8, there was an 8 series for mobile, and 9 series all had a standard MXM 3.0B format, which is what this is. That was all the high-end cards. And basically with the 900 series, NVIDIA announced the 980 desktop. And as you can see from these designs, the 980 desktop no longer followed the standard design. This is because the 980 used more power than these modules were originally designed for. For example, the Type B is normally supposed to have a 100 watt TDP. Type A normally has 55 watt TDP. The newer designs had 150 watts, 180 watts, 200 watts. We had all these new designs. And the excuse back then was, oh, NVIDIA no longer provides the reference design for these cards, so we have to design them ourselves, and they require an external power, just like how desktop GPUs require external power. Well, I'm here to say that that's not entirely true from what I've noticed. Let me explain why. I have in my hand here is a GTX 1080 desktop grade card. This is a 150 watt TDP card, and if we put them side by side, you can tell that it's almost the exact same size. The only difference is the length. A MXM 3.0B has an 82 by 105 millimeter size. This one has 82 by 113 millimeters. And what's so good about these cards is look at the layout. You can actually reuse the heatsink from this card for this card. Now this card does have a four pin power connector here, but that's not too much of an issue. My point here is all those crazy designs you saw earlier, I don't think we needed them because this is a 1080 and you just saw those other 980s and even 1080s that had these weird designs. You see, the thing is, laptops are moving to thin and light designs and unfortunately, these standards are pretty much dead. 
Except, this is living proof here that this design is kind of still going in a way. You see, in medical field, military, and other fields like that, they actually still use MX7 graphics cards. That is the only reason that I am able to get this GTX 1080 is because there's a few companies, as I'll put them on the screen here, that still make these cards. And thanks to those companies and people selling these cards on the side, I was able to get this and it allows people like me who have these old laptops to still upgrade them till this day. Next year, I plan to get a Quadro A4000 in the laptop I'm upgrading today. Hopefully that comes true, but whether or not, be sure to subscribe because this GTX 1080 is going to go on another laptop, but not on the one that I'm going to show you all today. Let's be honest, if I have a desktop that's 10 years old running something like a GTX 275, it is no difficulty for me to go out and buy something like a RTX 2080 Ti and put it in the computer. Maybe I need to upgrade my power supply because this uses less power than this, but the point is, it's very simple. That was the exact same concept MX and SIG had back then with these cards. Until this day, as long as there is someone out there making MXM cards, us computer enthusiasts, or I guess laptop enthusiasts, are going to continue pushing our laptops beyond what they're originally made for. And hopefully one day, some standard like this comes back because this is a very useful standard. Not only do we have GPUs now, but as you saw, someone actually made an MXM to NVMe adapter. So these can literally do more than just GPUs. You can get literally anything PCI Express supports. With that said, let's go ahead and upgrade my laptop and see how it turns out, shall we? All right, so the laptop we upgrade today is the Alienware M18X R2. And as you can see, it has an SLI sticker there and an i7 Extreme CPU sticker because this has dual GPUs and an i7 Extreme quad core. I do have its older brother up here, the Air 51M R1, but that one actually can't be upgraded as much as this one. So let's go ahead and open this up, shall we? Alright, before we open up the laptop, let me just close in on these MXM cards. As you can see, the overall layout hasn't changed much at all over the years, and my new RTX 3000 looks like it's, it'll work perfectly fine. Now the die size is a lot bigger, but that's not an issue since the heat sinks copper plate is big enough to cover the whole die. So here's a little picture of my SLI setup. We're going to tear everything apart. And the important thing here is to put thermal pads on all the components and then put the heatsink on. So let's go ahead and plug this in. All right, so we pretty much just summed the whole laptop. Now this is the graphics card, the CPU, and this is where the second graphics card would go. But instead, we're going to go ahead and install this with the SSD. All right, so the SSD I'll be using is a Samsung 980 Pro. Um, there's no particular reason why I'm gonna use a PCI Express 4.0 besides I want the latest SSD and it wasn't that much more expensive than the 970. So we'll see how it performs in here. All right, so as you can see, it has fit perfectly in here. There's no heat sink right there I'm gonna add to this because it's definitely not gonna get as hot as a GPU would, but yeah, so let's go ahead and sample everything back up and test. It out. All right, so let's take a look at some SSD benchmarks. So on the left side here, we have a 860 EVO with RAID 0 and single. And as you can see, the NVMe drive gets full on PCI Express 3.0 x4 speeds. This is a screenshot of my previous RAID 0 setup. And then here's a little bonus benchmark right here. Now moving on to GPU, as you can see, you can't install the drivers normally. What you have to do is modify the INF file and add the hardware ID which isn't too hard to do, it takes a few minutes. And once it's done, as you can see, the control panel recognizes the GPU perfectly fine and everything works perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and run some benchmarks. As you can see in Firestrike, it got about 16,000 graphics score, which is pretty good in my opinion. For 1080p, this will work really well. And looking at the Time Spy score, we got 5846 for the graphics, which again, should provide us great performance at 1080p. And since this is a ray tracing GPU, here is a Port Royal score. Now, one thing I didn't mention is I also updated the Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi 6. So this laptop is pretty much up to spec now with all these upgrades. Well, there you have it. You saw what the beauty of MXM can do to a laptop this old. Not only did we add an NVMe SSD to this old laptop, we also got an RTX 3000, which is a 2060 in GeForce world. And basically I can now do ray tracing, I can now do DLSS, and I'm running a single GPU, so no more SLI issues since SLI is pretty much dead anyways. But you see, that's not the only thing I upgraded on this laptop. 
this laptop actually was upgraded with 32 gigabytes of 2133 megahertz RAM and I even added Wi-Fi 6E in Bluetooth 2 5.2. You see, using something like mini PCIe for the Wi-Fi and standard RAM slots allows these type of computers to be upgraded. So hopefully in the future, this type of stuff stays where we get standardized slots like this and maybe one day MXM will come back. For now, we'll have to rely on these companies that make these MXM modules and get them and upgrade our laptops. And hopefully one day, we get them standardized again. Now, be sure to subscribe because I mentioned I upgraded the RAM to 2133 MHz. It was running 1600 MHz in the beginning. And one thing I didn't mention is GPUs from the 10 series and up no longer support LVDS, which is what this laptop has. Think of LVDS as the VGA port of laptops. All the newer GPUs only support EDP, which is basically a display port. This laptop does not have an embedded display port panel, it has an LVDS panel. And the way that all of us get around this right now is using Nvidia Optimus. The only reason that laptop is able to use this new card is thanks to the integrated graphics. So be sure, sure to subscribe because I'm going to show the performance difference of a 2133 MHz RAM kit versus 16 MHz RAM kit using NVIDIA Optimus. So, with that said, I'll see you on the next one.